All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to learn about solving equations that have radicals. And you can also see we'll do a little bit of vocabulary talking about functions and their inverses and how this works. All right, so what does it mean to solve? Well, remember, that means that we're trying to find the magic value of x that when we plug it in, it's going to make a true statement. It's going to balance both sides of the equations. We just need to find out what that value of x is going to be. But in order to do that, we're going to need to get rid of the radical sign so we can go back to doing what we know, and that's solving. All right, so to do that, we need to talk about an inverse operation. So an o inverse operation is the opposite mathematical function. A mathematical function are the things that we do, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, squaring, square rooting, all of those things. So an inverse is something that undoes the first function. And we've been doing that all the way along. If we want to get rid of an adding 3x, we subtract 3x. We do the opposite because it undoes it. So for example, the opposite of subtraction is addition, and the opposite of addition is subtraction. Same thing with multiplication. The inverse operation is division and vice versa. And as it turns out, the opposite of a square root is to square something or raise something to the power of 2. And these things will undo each other. So let's take a look at why this works. So let's start with 3. And if I square 3, I'm going to get 9. So 3 times itself is going to be 9. And if I take the square root of 9, recall that I'm looking for a number that multiplies by itself 2 times to get 9. And we know that that square root would be 3. I can also rewrite 9 as 3 squared. And so you can see I'm doing the square root of 3 squared. We already know that the answer to this is 3. But you can see here that the squared and the square root will cancel each other out. You undo what you did, and you get what you started with, which was 3. Now, it's also true that negative 3 squared is equal to 9. So we do have to talk about the negative roots. But if we want the negative root, we're not going to say the square root of 9 is equal to negative 3. If we say the square root of 9, we're talking about the positive root. If we want the negative root, then we're going to say the negative square root of 9, and that will give us the negative 3. That way we can keep them straight, because they're two different things. So here's the steps of how we're going to solve an equation that has a radical in it. First thing we need to do is to get the radical sign alone. Now, there will be stuff underneath the radical, but we don't want anything on the outside. So we're going to pretend just like it's our x and we're trying to get it alone, or like we did with the absolute value. We had to get rid of anything outside those absolute value signs before we could solve that problem. Once square root sign is alone, we're going to undo that square root by doing the opposite operation, which is to square it. And to keep the equation balanced, we have to do it on both sides. Now, anything inside the radical is remaining unchanged. I'll show you how that works. So you have to think of what's under the radical, what's inside is like something in parentheses. Once you get rid of the radical, we'll have just an x to solve for, and we're experts on how to do that now. Once we're done, however, what we need to do is check to make sure our answer is valid and it balances the equation. Beware, we can get answers that don't work. It looks like they work, but when we go to go check it, we find that they really don't work and there is no solution. All right, so here's our first example. We're going to start with really easy ones and build up as we go. So we have the square root of x is equal to 5. So we're looking for the magic number in there for x that would give us a true statement. You notice that we're looking for the positive answer here. And I know you already know the answer, but we're going to go through the steps just to see how it works. So first, we're going to check to see, is there anything outside of the radical? Something that's not in the radical we got to get rid of. And we can see, nope, there's not. So to undo the square root, we're going to square it. So we're going to square both sides of the equation. And when you do that, the squared and the square root cancel each other out that now we're going to have x is equal to 25. Now, when we plug that back in and check, we can see that definitely works. The square root of 25, the positive square root of 25 is 5. So that works. 
All right, so we're just going to add to it as we go along. How about this equation? The square root of x equals negative 5. Now I know, I know you're tempted here. You're saying, you know what? It's 25. But it's asking for the positive root. And the solution for this is negative. So really, this is not possible. This is no solution. We have to pay attention to what they're asking us. So if you see a positive square root asking for a negative answer, that's a no solution. And that goes the same for this one as well. This is asking for the negative square root, and they have given us a positive answer. So that is also no solution. The notation is what's really important here. You notice that no matter what I put in there, the answer would be negative. We would never get a positive 5. All right, we're going to find the uh, square root of x plus 3, and we want to find the value of x so that, x, so that when we're done, it's going to equal 20. So first we're looking to see, is there anything not under the radical? Anything outside the radical out here that we got to get rid of? And there's not. So to undo the square root, we're going to square it. When we do that, the squared and the square root are going to cancel out. You notice that what's inside remains unchanged. Okay, we can do that because the x plus 3 is in parentheses. It's a separate little entity. And when we simplify, we get x plus 3 is equal to 400. Now we're just going to solve like we always do. We'll subtract 3 from both sides, and we get x equals 397. Now, is this a valid answer? Let's double check. So when we plug it in, we'll get 397 plus 3, which is 400 and the square root of 400 is 20. So you can see that guess and check kind of works with this, but as the equations get more and more complicated, we're going to find that we want to follow the patterns that we have for problem solving, and it makes it go a lot faster. All right, so here we go. We want the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 20. All right, we see the um, square root sign. We know the opposite of a square root is to square it, and so we simply square both sides, and wait a minute, hold on. If we square both sides, there is this plus sign here. If I do the square root of x plus 3 and I square it, that's the square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 3, and if we did that, we would get the square root of x squared plus 6 times the square root of x plus 9 if we put it in our box, and that does not help us. In fact, that is way more complicated than it was. And so what did we do wrong? Hmm. Well, we definitely don't want to do that because remember, our first step was to see, is the absolute value sign alone? Is there anything that's not under the absolute value sign? And there was. Okay, we got to get the radical alone first, and we need to get rid of this plus 3. That doesn't belong there. So the first thing we're going to do is to balance the equation and get rid of the 3. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides, and we get the square root of x equals 17. Now the radical is alone. There's nothing outside of the radical that's not encased inside. And now we can do the opposite of the square root. We're going to square both sides. The, ra the square root and the squared cancel each other out, and we get x equals 289. Now watch what happens when we check. The square root of 289 is 17. And 17 plus 3 does give us 20. All right, so now we're getting a little more complicated. We're adding a layer as we go along. So we have 3 plus the square root of x plus 1. And we know from last time, we need to get rid of anything that's outside. So we need to get rid of this 3. It's being added. The opposite of a plus 3 is minus 3. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And when we do that, we'll have the square root of x minus 1 equals 2. OK, now our square root sign is alone. Everything inside is encased. So we're going to square both sides to undo the radical and balance the equation. So we square both sides. And the square root and the square will cancel out. Remember, anything inside remains unchanged. So now we have x minus 1 is equal to 4. Now we just solve like uh, normal. We add 1 to both sides. We get x equals 5. So now we got to check. We plug it in. We're going to do what's inside the radical first when we check, of course. So we're going to have to say 5 minus 1. We cannot break up this radical because there's a subtraction sign in there. Think of this as being in parentheses. So we're going to say 5 minus 1 is 4. 
the square root of 4 is 2, and 3 plus 2 is 5, so this works. Okay, so order of operations here, when we talk about parentheses, anything inside a radical is in parentheses. We have to do that first. All right, now, this is an evil problem. This looks like we should go 6 minus 2 first, but we have to, have to, have to follow our order of operations, which says we cannot do this first until we do the multiplication. And you're like, well, wait a minute, I'm not really sure what to do then first, Mrs. Woolley. Well, we know that we have to get the square root sign alone. We know that we have to get rid of the 6, and we know that we have to get rid of the minus 2. But I want you to notice that this is squished together. The 2 and the radical are squished together, and that means that it is multiplication. So you can think of this as 6 minus 2x. Just pretend this is an x. Okay? We can't really do 6 minus 2. What we need to do first is subtract out that 6. So this is a plus 6. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. Okay? And when we do that, we're going to be left with negative 2 times the square root of 3x is equal to negative 6. Now, you might be tempted to say, wait, 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 that's a negative sign. This isn't going to work, but we got a negative sign over here, too. So we got to keep going here. So this means multiplying. We do need to get rid of this. So we're going to do the opposite operation, which is dividing both sides by that negative 2. When we do that, the negative 2 divided by negative 2 cancels out, and the negative 6 divides by negative 2 to get a positive 3. So really, this is the problem we're solving. And we can see now, we've gotten rid of everything outside the radical. So now the radicals alone, we can square the square root both sides to balance the equation. The square root and the square cancels out, and we're left with 3x equals 9. And by dividing both sides by 3, we get x equals 3. I'm going to have you check to make sure that it works. Order of operations, make sure you do what's inside the radical or the square root sign before you keep going. And then you would also have to multiply it by negative 2 before you subtract it from 3. So go, go ahead and try that. Make sure that it works. All right, finally we get to a little more complicated problem. And that is something that has a radical on both sides. If you have a radical on both sides, and there is, if they're alone, great. If they're not alone and there's no way to get them alone, we are going to have to be a little tricky here. So if we have radicals on both sides, we are going to simply square both sides to see if we can get rid of the radical. So we square both sides. All of the radicals, all of the square roots and the squares cancel out. And we're left with 2x plus 6 equals 2x minus 5. Now, remember, we're just going to solve this. We're going to get the x's on one side. We're going to get the numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract this 2x here on both sides to get it alone. And wait a minute. Then the 2's cancel out, and I'm left with 6 equals negative 5. Oh, wait a minute. That's not a true statement, which means, well, this would never work. And that makes sense. We can't take a number and add 6 and make it to the same number subtracting by 5. There's no way for this to work. This is a no solution. So I have a couple of tricky ones like that at the end, but what we're going to work on now is a small cake worksheet. Okay? You need to show all of your work and find the answer to the riddle. Now I know you'll finally find the, you'll probably find the answer to the riddle well before you find all of the answers, and that way you can work backwards. So when you get to those challenging ones at the end, you'll be able to figure out what's going on. All right, good luck, ladies and gentlemen.